Assalamualaikum and good afternoon. Welcome to Widerscape 6 Malay Segmentation uh, Presentation Talk. My name is Zaki Zin. Um, I'll be your host today. Thanks for joining us today. Um, we're honored and, and delighted that to bring to you six, uh, refresh six Malay consumer segmentation model. Uh, the segment segmentation work was first published in Brand Fast in 2014. And since then, the, the, the Malays in the country has, has, has undergone some social, economic and political changes which resulted as in changes in, in dynamics of, of the segment. Our work at, the, um, at IDESCA has been helping brands and businesses grow from applying relevant insights to our strategy. So we took license that, that being Malay ourselves, being Malay myself and Romai Zone as well, um, though we are diverse, but, but the, the founder and myself, okay, so we look at how these changes could help us in, to help our clients to look at the consumer better. So this segmentation model has been used mostly in marketing contexts, uh, but do feel free it, uh, to use it in your own context. Yeah, and we appreciate if you can share application stories with us um, later on. So today, Rumaizon will be sharing with us, um, all of us, what those changes are. And I strongly encourage all of you um, to make the most of the today's session by thinking what this segment means to your business, what can be done to your products. So I am one of the earlier uh, consumer of this, of this segmentation insights. Um, you know, I, I've used it when I was heading the sub brand of S26 a uh, few years back and then can attest that, that by using this uh, part of it, uh, we have grown the business like, like five times over the time. So um, to get the most benefit of the session, uh, I would like to request that uh, you mute, mute yourself. Uh, put your questions in the chat box. I will try to answer as much as possible and, and we'll be giving away summaries of today's, uh, today's presentation. And if you like copy, please register to receive a scan in the QR code. Yeah, at the bottom there, you see under the summary we're given. And, and um, uh, then I'll now hand over to, to Rome to um, to start the, the ball rolling. Rome, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Zaki. Thank you, Zaki. Um, Ex-client became friends and now my colleague. Thank you, Zaki. Assalamualaikum and good afternoon. Thank you all, everyone. I see some familiar names. I'm so, so delighted um, to be here and to share with you uh, the six Malay consumer segmentation refreshed. Um, and I really hope that you will benefit from today's presentation. Oh, I need to switch on my camera. Yes, thank you for reminding me. Where is my camera? Yes, thank you, thank you. Um, so a little introduction um, of myself or some of you who've, uh, who doesn't know me with, uh, I think pretty much this is for, uh, this talk is uh, geared up for marketeers and brand people, um, but maybe there are some of you who may not um, know me. I started Ideascape about 11 years ago. And after I left my role as a consumer and market insights manager in Nestle, um, um, I decided that I wanted to do a, a, a lot bigger work. And so uh, our work mainly has been in the area of strategic planning for branding, marketing, and communication. Yeah. Uh, we recently, however, uh, pivoted and we became a company that's helping leaders grow their business and brands to achieve profit with purpose. Um, and still, however, based on relevant insights about the consumers. I'm seeing a little bit of a tech issue now because you're seeing the, it's okay? All right, thank you. Thank you, my tech support. That's not what we're seeing on the screen. I'm just checking. Right. Okay. All right. Great. So let me continue. So yeah, so that was 11 years ago. And now we continue and we're still doing the work, but we, we continuously nudge our clients to think about what else they can do and uh, driving the growth uh, using insights, because that's what I'm passionate about. So today, um, introduction of segmentation marketing. What 
what what do we use uh, segmentation marketing for and how do we use it is is what I would like to talk about in a little bit uh, first. Um, segmentation marketing. So there are many, many ways to segment the consumers. Yeah. So if you have a whole consumer uh, population out there, um, most common method of segmentation is demographic. I, I'm pretty sure you have seen that. But this particular model is what we call mindset segmentation model. And I'll get a little bit into detail why we look at mindset segmentation. Um, please use this model to understand them, not to box them. And when you go through the presentation today, the talk today, keep your brand in mind. Think about what does this mean for me and how can I or my brand speak to them in a lot uh, in a lot more relevant manner, yeah? And although we give labels to each uh, segment, um, I would like to stress here that any one of us can belong to more than one segment because we are not a straightforward um, human being, yeah? We have thoughts, we have experiences, we go through life um, changing moments and that impacts on how we look at the world. So any one person can belong to more than one segment depending on that uh, phase of life they're going through, uh, depending on the situation. Um, think about yourself. Where do you think you fit into any one of the segments that I'm going to be talking about, yeah? Um, what have we used segmentation marketing for? And in my experience uh, as a brand marketeer person, we have done this work for new product development. An example I would say right now is that um, I was working on a brand called Simplicity. Um, this is a Siti Nohaliza skincare brand. And then understanding the Malay segment and particularly a certain segment of the Malays, we understood that their definition of beauty is beyond physical. So beauty to the Malays is very skin deep. Um, there's this term called kecantikan dalaman or inner beauty. So trying to bring out that inner beauty to the surface, um, that led uh, R&D to look into how they can create a product that can bring out your inner beauty. So guess what? They included this active ingredient where um, it is, it, it, it's a hormone-based uh, um, active ingredient that is put into the moisturizer. So when you apply the moisturizer on your face, you automatically feel happy. So when you feel happy, you glow. So that's the, that's the kind of examples we did um, in terms of using the segment driver to develop new product, yeah? We've also used it in communication. Um, where we address, uh, for example, case in point is what Zaki had last time when we wanted to um, refocus or retarget uh, the product from, from the Chinese segment to the Malay segment, understand better what about parenting? What is it that drives uh, Malay moms when it comes to um, what does success mean for her in raising her children? So. What's the ultimate goal for a Malay parent? And representing that in the communication campaign, in the communication messaging, um, help to actually sharpen the message and make it more relevant to the that particular consumer segment. We had also used it in launch plans. Uh, one very recent case study examples is um, I used it for my client Gardenia when we launched uh, their yellow fresh yellow noodle. We understood um, what was uh, the mindset for a Malay segment called Joya, which is the regular users of fresh yellow noodle. What was the mindset for Tina? We called this segment of uh, consumers who are not quite into yellow noodle. They want to have yellow noodle. They want to eat it, but they don't think that it's healthy for them. So they tend to substitute yellow noodle with pasta or some other types of noodles. So understanding that it was, it, we used it to help us create a more efficient launch plans for Numi Gardenia um, to go into the market. So 
this is examples of how we use segmentation marketing. I can't quote specific numbers, I'm sorry, because um, those are confidential information, but I can share with you how we have used it along um, the years when we, we, we do this with our client. How did we do this? Um, my life, I graduated uh, with a master's in, in applied social and market research. And then I went straight to doing uh, consumer market insights in, in Maxis, in Unilever and in Nestle. So my whole life has been a pretty much a kepochi. So some of those pictures you can see I was um, interviewing consumers in their own home. So I had done hundreds of focus group and home visits the past what 25 years or more than 25 years so this is a collection of um, our observation of the changing consumer landscape and the the benefit or the merit of this is knowing how to ask the right questions probe deeper into their minds yeah so we would we did not just ask you an a type of question uh, for those of you who don't don't know what UNA means it basically stands for usage and attitude which is very the face level kind of question. We went really deep. We went, we stayed with the consumers and we understood their pain points and we pretty much became friends with them. And then when, when we had collected all these observations, we started creating hypotheses about certain segments. And then when the hypothesis is done up, a group of us went out and we validated this hypothesis through a consumer research called focus group discussions. Yeah. So then validation that, all right, are these segments behaving this way, focusing, uh, prioritizing in this manner? So those validation took time and we're pretty pleased to say that we have them now. Some of you may ask why mindset segmentation? Now we could we could get all sorts of segmentation model, um, they're pretty um, accessible, available, but I always feel that emotion drives behavior. So for as long as we do not get to the core of what drives your thought processes, um, that behavior change is going to be quite artificial or non-sustainable, yeah? So my sex segmentation has been proven to really, really powerful in getting consumers to understanding consumers' um, uh, pain points, uh, drivers and barriers to adoption, um, um, what, what makes them feel a certain way, or what are the limitations to uh, get them to behave the way we want them to behave, yeah? What you will get from today is basically qualitative analysis uh, based on empirical observations. This has been proven time and time again, yet again. So I dare say that it works, it is valid. You will be getting top line analysis from the different segments and you'll be able to compare what are the difference between the segments because it's easy to say, I'm targeting the Malays, but which segment of the Malays? because um, the segments could behave very, very differently because their mindsets are uh, different. And you will be able to understand the, what drives the behavior because this is a very deeper layer. This is psychographic and mindset. And what you will also get is an implication to you as a marketeer. So how do I use this information uh, knowing or considering that other people have used it in this way. Because going through the top three, I'm going to give you um, examples of how it has been applied in our work, yeah, for our clients. And you will also get insights to help you craft a better strategy for your brand or your business. The Malays. These are the Malays over time or at least the Malays in a snapshot. So if we talk about the Malays, what are the stark differences about the Malays? And I'm, I'm going to find some key observations here, yeah? The Malays, they are one that will defend their faith. Um, we believe that salvation is always there. 
So no matter how you how far you may steer from the path right now, um, there's always that intention. There's always that knowledge, uh, that that feeling that I I can repent and I can come back and I will. So to a certain extent, there is that and light that they are feeling or sensing in their life. Yeah. Um, the Malays are um, idealist to a certain extent. They will fight for what they believe in. And you, I'm sure some of you have seen this. So um, you will see that one segment called Umar Baru that I'm going to expose to you today is very much anchored upon this um, idealism, altruism uh, kind of thing. Yeah. So they will not just fight, they will be willing to pay premium for products that is uh, related or relevant to what they believe in. The Malays have taken the concept of Reda to a new level. What is Reda? Um, to non-Malay speakers, non-Malay uh, audience here, Reda is simply put submission. Uh, understanding or total faith um, that this is what's meant for me. Now, what does this mean uh, for us as marketeer is that um, because the Malays has accepted the concept of Reda, they tend to be a little less competitive if we are to compare to, their, to our Chinese neighbors, yeah? Um, you can see that the Malays um, Malays are the ones who have this concept that this is what God has fated me to be and I accept it. So I think that I'm not going to go any further or take the extra mile for that. Yeah. So this concept radar is there at the back of the mind of the Malays. Malays are also very communal. Um, there is a high sense of belonging. Um, the, we celebrate us uh, and, and appreciate, we live by social herding. Um, it's almost a scene to stand out and be different from everyone else because you be, you be, you be different and that's not what you, you should be. Yeah. Malays are also very manja. <laughs> How do I translate this into English? I try to find the English words. It's probably indulged, pampered. Um, we love to have it given to us. We like to be treated like we are um, important. And when I was in sociology uh, back in my undergrad uh, days, uh, the one word or the couple of words that only exist in Malay vocabulary is amo and marajo, rajo, you know. Um, Many other cultures do not have this. Just keep this at the back of your mind, yeah? And Malays are also emotional animal. Um, you will, one of my friends, Salwa, she's here in this, in this, in this room. She compiled that, that there are, and told me that there are 25 phrases with the root word hati or heart. So it's the Malays who will have phrases like makan hati, kecil hati, ambil hati, baik hati, um, all about hati, all about the heart. And um, we place a lot of importance about the heart more than the head. So these to a certain extent drives decision behavior, drives how they run their life, their behave on um, everyday level. So that's a lot, a lot of um, unspoken things. All these things are unspoken. You basically need to know and understand that these are characteristic attributes of a Malay. So you shouldn't ask why, why do you marajo? Because it's, it's in us, <laughs> yeah. So um, unspoken norms um, acceptable, and you should know when to speak or not to speak because you should know your place. That's, that's a very, very big thing amongst the Malay. Yeah. So in doing this work, our model for creating this segment um, has a slightly more scientific bearing rather than just 
um, observation like that. So if we, if we are to map the two axes between uh, social affinity and dynamism, and we will say that the Malays are already slightly lower on dynamism and higher on social affinity. We as a race are slightly more towards that bottom right corner um, of the axis, of the two axis. Yeah. Um, taking you now um, to compare Malays before this and the observations we have had in the past 20 years. And we will see that in general, Malay, so I, I mentioned some of this, we are practicing moderate Muslims and these drives our values. We are social herding, we are communalistic and we tend to conform. We have loyalty for the state we grew in. So we are like, you know, the Klantanes and the Johorians and Dans. They, when they meet with one another, they just click. So sense of brotherhood is very, very strong with the Malays. We are very humble and gentle people and very kind, sociable, everyone, I mean, highly unlikely you will get a Malay who, who will turn you away when you come to their house. You know, it, it's not like the Matsale, you know, you don't make appointment to come and see me, sorry, I'm not opening my doors. Some Likely when you turn up to a Malay home, they will be hospitable, they will allow you in and, and treat you nice. We observe traditions and culture. We think this is very, very important uh, and it guides a lot of our decisions and our uh, minds. We are kind of like risk adverse, very, very, the concept radar just now, this is what has made us become. We're quite contented with what we are. We don't want to rock the boat. Um, and the Malays, we are very more, a lot more creative and therefore, we are suffocated by discipline or structure. And the Malays are also hierarchical and respect their leaders. So this is generally how you would describe the Malays in Malaysia. However, it's been changing. And these, some of these changes are due to exposure um, to other culture, intermarriages. And we've seen Islamic revival coming into uh, dominant into place. Um, more so um, in the past 15 years, 10, 15 years, uh, the Malays have had better education, more exposure, travel, work overseas, lived overseas, and were able to benchmark. Internet and social media amplified these, these, these influences. Social and political divide play a role, and um, a lot of the Malays now are in the top 20 so we are we are we have more money smaller families so that has kind of like some kind of impact on us so what's the same uh, pretty much if we are to compare before and now pretty much the same we are still loyal we are still strength uh, sense of our brotherhood is still very strong we are still very sociable and kind we observe traditions and culture still very much um, resisting us uh, and being suffocated by discipline or structure. But we're getting more and more um, Islamic. That's, that's, that's a wave of Islamic um, revival coming to Malaysia. We're seeing more and more people adopting and becoming more religious. And you will see the impact of this in some of the segments I'm going to talk about later, yeah? And we're coming less communalistic. It's 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 okay to stand out. It's okay to be different. Um, we say, especially with the younger generations, they want to create something different. They want to stand out. Um, we are less humble and gentle. We speak out more, and you know, um, you can see the rise of the keyboard warriors talking uh, on social media. We are challenging our status quo. We are not just following what our leaders are saying. So that is starting to take shape and place, especially we see in the past five, seven years, it's becoming and getting more amplified, yeah? Now, these changes have resulted in the emergence and expansion of three segments that we will see today. 
So if we uh, base on the dimensions that uh, I've created, dynamism and social equity, we have got these three that has been around for the longest time, the, what we call the elitist, yeah? And the Sabah Sederhana and the Melayu traditional, it's there, it's still there. However, the changes that I explained just now has brought about changes in and create this three new segment called Gige, Umah Baru, and Santai Chilex. Introducing them to you today. Now, let's watch a quick video on this. Hi, um, welcome back. I hope that video were able to give you a brief overview of all the six segments. Now, um, it's worthwhile to mention that this is a psychographic or mindset segmentation that it transcends. So every segment, like I'm going to go into elitist. So the elitist, for example, there are elitists in the urban. They are elites in the rural. They are elites young as well as old. So demographic wise, this is not how we've done the segmentation. We've done it uh, via via their, their, their thinking pattern, their mindset, their, what drives their value system. If you are looking for a demographic segmentation, we can overlay that um, and see that maybe elites tend to be skew um, T20 
example, and they tend to be in the central region, for example, all those information is available, but I'm not going to share them with you now. You can uh, write to us later and we can talk about um, sharing those information with you later. I just don't have enough time to go through everything in one and a half hour today. Yeah, So I hope you understand that. I'm just going to explain what the uh, description of each, seg each segment. So now this elitist, the one thing you need to remember about the elitist is that they have this strong desire, the need to shine above others. It's all about aimuka, you know, it's about um, apa orang kata, what would people say? So that what would people say drives a lot of their decision, drives a lot of how they live their life. So they are defined by the need to stand out, shine above others. They are influenced by the powerful and the beautiful, and they, they appreciate structure protocol. They're, they're probably the most structured amongst the all six. Always very opinionated, not, not necessarily rational, and they need to be heard, yeah? Always very selective with their actions and they tend to focus on self-gain. Now, how do you find these people? These are the kind of people, again, like I mentioned, they are present either in and rural. So even in the rural area, you will find this, this Machi Tima who like every Kanduri, she has to be there. Every AJK Kampong meeting, she has to be the one standing up and speaking and giving solutions to other people's problem. So it's all about me. What, what How do people perceive me? What value I bring into the onto the table, but it's perceive me that drives their identity so therefore they are very ambitious very competitive and they tend to be very very thickish very small and they don't normally allow others to get into the circle so you have to be one of them to actually speak or get 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 close to them so if you're a brand and you are addressing this segment you had better, better bring yourself up to their level because if you're not one of them, they won't pay any attention to you, not, not two minutes of their time. Yeah. So some of the um, elite subgroups, um, we have the shining socialites and these can be either you get into the circle or you're born in, in that circle. Uh, the Jago Kampung and people who are in the elitist group because they've made it through their career. Yeah. So this is the elitist subgroup. Um, what is the implication for us, brand people? So please note that these people, they will look for the premium best. They like anything, not just international, but as long as it's branded. Again, like I, I mentioned earlier, because they exist in every pockets of uh, the, 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 the demographics, the, it's relative. So what is branded to you, may, what is branded to them may not be branded to you. So uh, a Jago Campo may feel that, you know, bone brand as a brand or coach as a brand is super premium. But to someone, an elitist in the urban area might think that nothing less than LV or Chanel would cut, cut it, yeah? So gadget also is a sign of status. So they would want to be on the latest gadget, the latest iPhone 12 Pro, I think, right? That's the latest? No. I clearly don't belong here. <laughs> and they like to be a reference. They like to be quoted. They like to be said that, oh, yeah, that so and so said this, doctor, whoever has uh, um, um, mentioned this in their, in their speech. And they tend to be very emotional in making, discerning, um, but very, very loyal to certain favorite brands. And they have, they are very experimentalist. They love and they have large repertoire of brands. In their, in, their, in their keepings, yeah? The next one is, how do we want to explain Gige? Now, Gige is 
what I think I would describe the this group, this segment as the one that is the closest to having a mindset of the Chinese. Now, why do I say that? The Gigi are the ones who, they are so um, into progress, but the progress is for themselves, yeah? I need to I need to get better. I need to um, get certification. I need to get my master's, my PhD. I need to advance my life. I need to get to become the the CEO um, by the age of thirty. All very measurable uh, type of success indicators. Now the Gigi, they are very open minded they value knowledge, and they want to be up to date. Uh, very high discipline, high tolerance for risk. Um, and most of the entrepreneurs that you see out there, they belong in this sector. They tend to be smarter because they, have, they think and therefore they have opinions. But most of the times, their opinions are rational, not so emotional, like the um, elitist segment, yeah? And they have high orientation and proactive, but focus on personal achievement. So at work, these would be the kind of people that, you know, every time there is a training program, they would sign up for it. They will be collecting certificates. They would want to advance themselves and get as much information, as much knowledge as possible to advance themselves. Um, how you identify them? How do you find them? They are ambitious, they seek results, success, and they work hard. And they, they are not afraid of working hard. Generally confident, they are really leaders who will get their hands dirty. Um, most of the time, these people, they are time poor, which means that they will look for solutions, complete solutions. They will look for things that can simplify their life, help them to become a better mom, a better dad, uh, help Honest, make this cooking uh, easier. Yeah, they are felt more family focused, but they do not micromanage. They tend to delegate. They would have uh, their maids or their uh, assistant to help them um, to do this. Yeah. So, some subgroup of the gigas, um, you will see the entrepreneurs, the side hustler, and of late we have seen more and more of this, like the uh, drop. Uh, the online shopper, the agents who are selling brand out there. And if they're working, they tend to be the skill collector. So these are the Gigi subgroup. What does this mean for us? So if your brand is addressing or um, um, focusing um, on this segment, you need to understand that you have to speak to them as if you are talking to a Chinese person because more um, the elitist, you would want to appeal to their emotions. Um, so is some of the other segments. But for the for this segment, you would want to tell them, you know, um, how what are the ingredients in this in in this product? How what is the process that you make this? so that the brand or your product is superior than others. They would be looking for uh, um, information like that from you. So they're looking for efficient, effective way, and they want convenience, they want clarity, they want functional performance, and they love clever solutions. They use a lot of technology, and when they use technology, it's mainly to boost effectiveness. Like, so for example, the difference, the, the, the difference between Elites and Gigi. So if Elites are buying iPhone 12 Pro, it's because I have to be seen carrying the latest handphone, the latest iPhone uh, product. But for Gigi, if she chooses iPhone 12, uh, 12 Pro, it's most likely because I am. Um, it helps me in my work because I have to do videos, I have to create, take pictures, I have to have better interface, whatever technical aspect of iPhone 12 that that makes iPhone 12 better than other phones. So they will go for that. So amplify those important messages for them. Yeah, They're always rational uh, in their decision-making, 
very, very discerning, not simply brand loyal. They wouldn't be the ones that will just get onto the brand because you tell them get onto this brand. They will ask you why, why not, how come, can I get a better price? And um, they tend to be the ones who like to have quality, but at a more um, discounted price. So they will go for like um, sale, um, they will they will go for the what um, 12 12 or 11 11 kind of sale yeah the third segment is Malaya traditional now this segment the main thing about Malaya traditional is about preserving status quo just do not break do do not fix what's not broken, basically. Yeah, do not rock the boat. Um, they have high level of inertia um, to what where they are in their life right now. They are very, they, they are the ones who've taken concept radar to another level. It's accepting what is given to me by the mighty. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm good with where I am. So they are mostly defined by their need for status quo and preserving tradition they uh, their dynamism uh, level is very very low they're most likely to be contented they do not hunger for progress um, they are quite wary of change and if they do change is because they trust the leader who brings the news for change yeah um, they don't want to be different happy to be part of the group they don't want to stand out they need structure predict predictability and they are the kind who will obey orders, follow norms. Do not, do not get them to that's different or unique. If that's the way they have been cooking their their noodle or their rice for a very very long time, do not go and tell them like, okay, you can you can you know start putting mayonnaise in, in on top of your nasi goreng. Nah, it doesn't work with this this, this segment, yeah. So. They are, uh, how do you find them? They they tend to click together very, very of the uh, group think. Um, they follow what their, their clan says. Um, and I mentioned about the need to fit in, uh, follows and respect authority. They are unambitious and they prefer a steady income. So if you get someone um, which I think I, I did one time a uh, perfect match for the job but the he or she lives like maybe um, an hour away from the office and they would give up that they will not take a, a challenging offer a challenging even if you say it's better for their life they are okay with where they are so there's also, like I mentioned, if there is an elitist in the kampung, you will see that there's also elite, uh, Melayu traditional in the urban areas. All right, so I have a friend. Um, do not judge by how she, um, they, they, are, they are dressed. Um, we were chilling and having a good time. And then suddenly she announced, oh, really, I have got to go home now. It's uh, my husband's going to be home in five minutes. So what drives her, what's important to her is that the belief system that a wife should be at home to receive her husband when he comes home from work. And she's very, in terms of, um, in terms of her um, appearance, she doesn't look like she's a Malayu traditional, but her mindset is like one. So... Um, she makes sure that all her children complete the Quran before they get into like secondary school. Um, there are certain certain things she makes sure her family follows and and um, respect tradition. Yeah, so they will fight to great length to keep this alive. So this group of uh, consumer. They would go for long-established familiar brands. 
if their mom has been using this, their grandmother has been using it, chances are you will see that in that brand in their pantry. Yeah. Um, they are not experimentalists at all. They will not be the first uh, mover uh, to adopt new things. They will wait for other people and then they will follow suit. Most of the time when they are making decision is either autopilot or it's like I like simply because I like the color or I like the packaging. And they tend to be very, very, very loyal. So if you get them into your brand uh, repertoire, into your brand portfolio, you will most likely have them for the next couple of generation, yeah? This is very interesting. So the, 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 three, the three ones you saw just now have, were the ones that has been around for the longest, longest time forever. We're going to go now into the new segments that we're seeing, yeah, uh, that we're observing to surface in the past, what, 15, 20 years. And this first one is called Santai Chilex, introducing to you Santai Chilex. And Santa Chilex, if you must know, if there's anything you want to remember about Santa Chilex, it's all about, I do it my way. I don't want to follow other people. I don't want to be, they are the opposite of Melayu tradition. It's so not cool to be doing what your mom is doing. So they want to be defined by the need to enjoy their lives, by their own rules, on their own terms. So they're passionate about self-definition and not following the norms. I'm I'm different. I don't want to be seen like the rest. Yeah. Um, and they get highly excited with these uh, new experiences, um, new ideas. They would be more likely to accept, um, new things like if someone is pardon me, LGBT, for example, yeah? They will be the ones who are saying, it's okay, we just accept them. When the Melayu traditional will be going like, nah, -uh. ah, the, the elitist might go, no, 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 that's not one of us. But Santa Chile is, okay, so you you have a, a different uh, sexual orientation, that, that's fine, that's just you, I don't judge you like that. So they tend to be suffocated by structure, they don't, they don't, uh, do well when you put them in a box. They're highly emotional and whenever they make uh, decisions on based on gut feel rather than rational analysis. Yeah. Uh, highly action, but you know what? Only on things they're passionate about. So how do you find the Santai Chilex? Yeah, where do you get them? Um, one very good example I will say is that you'll find them when you interview them and you see that what they want to achieve in life has nothing to do with career or money. So Santa Chilex, um, their life goal would be perhaps something like, oh, I want to see the rest of Asia before I'm 35. I want to go and live in in, in some fancy country in Scandinavia before, before um, I'm, I, I, I turn 30, something like that. So their life goals has got none at all whatsoever with career, money, or how other people see them. It's all about them. And they also thrive to be seen as the first one to get to do things. So the first one to ever experience dining in the dark or underwater, sitting on the toilet bowl, having your meal, <laughs> kind of thing. all kinds of crazy stuff. This is the, the budge. So if your product, your brand is, uh, is, is out of the norm, right? You, your chances are you're, you're, you're after this, this group. So just, just bear in mind. I'm sorry, but I'm not, I, I'm not looking at the um, chat group, but keep them coming. I, I could glance because I have to focus on the slides, but keep them coming. I will, uh, I will read them later. 
So some of the Santai Chilex subgroup, the Yulos and the Fomos, and this is where you find the key opinion leaders, the influencers, the YouTubers, yeah, uh, the Life Rebel, the Evergreen. Um, this is this is the activist. Now again, I. I have to mention this again. Santai Chilek exists not only with the young. So you get a bunch of doctors or lawyers who would six o'clock in the morning turn up at the golf course or do not want to open their office on weekends, no matter what. Or a group of um, uh, very, very, not very Ola, <laughs> I'm so mean. Um, maybe 50 plus year olds on a Harley Davidson. Uh, can you picture them? All right. So Sunday Chilex is not just the young. They, you find them also, um, you know, um, uh, groups that goes karaoke every other night. Um, the group that is into baking, into diving, they, they go and experience life to the fullest. Yeah. So what does this mean for us marketers? They would want a product or a brand that reflects them. Yeah. Well, scarcity has its value here. If you can get personalized uh, shampoo bottle, go get them for this, this segment. Yeah. Uh, personalize whatever you have. You, you can have their face, their name onto your product and that would be super them yeah um cool quirky fun innovative brands love sensory cues but only or in their categories of interest and when they consume they do consume a lot of media and when they do it it's not about uh tech it's mainly for enjoyment um they are the one who would be your free media giving you free media coverage you know the, remember i mentioned about the influencers and the KOLs. Um, so they like you free of charge. They will blast you out. They will talk and they will do reviews for you. And they like experimenting and they tend to have large repertoire of brands and things that they love. Okay. I'm speaking very fast. How am I doing with time, Martin? Okay, good. Thank you. The next one is, ha ha ha, this is interesting. This is Mr. Hana. Now, they look very similar to Melayu traditional, slightly different. Now, what's the difference between Seber Sederhana and Melayu traditional? Is Seber Sederhana, they are slightly more dynamic than Melayu traditional. That means they, their appetite for risk is slightly higher. They will step out of their comfort zone a little bit more. And they tend to be the ones who want the best for both worlds. Yeah. Um, they want to venture, but they still want safety net. Yeah. So they tend to be moderate, sensible. Uh, I think the tagline I created for this group is Apapa Pumbolela. You know, anything can, anything also can go, whatever, you, what do you want to eat? Anything also can, uh, they never, they don't have an opinion. Uh, they don't want to challenge. Um, they need structure, low tolerance for risk, and we will work to mitigate risk, rational, practical, and they do not need to be hurt. They are, they are very, very capable foot soldiers, yeah? Yeah. Identity image, um, low profile, decent, you know, uh, chances are, if you're in tudung business, they would want the tudung that just pakai, just sarung and go. No need to beli beli sepuluh kali and then try to find pin here there. You know, got got bunga here, bunga there. No, give them something simple. Um, because appearance is not very important as long as you look presentable. They are followers uh, rather than leaders. Care very nice, caring people. I love them. Uh, very very collaborative. They will. Not not say no to you ask for help okay um again in their group very consensus seeking and everyone just mind their own business very very dependable at work and parenthood defines them they are tend to be very involved parents who put more structure into their childcare. the 
the subgroups for this is family centered and steady careerist. Okay, steady careerist. I I've I've got one person like this when I was in Nestle. Oh my gosh. I offered him a promotion and he's like, no, thank you. I don't want promotion because I want to go home at 4.30 every day. Oh, okay. I mean, <laughs> what can I say? Yeah. So uh, people like this. So what does it mean for us? So if you are addressing them, where can you find them? Masa apa hari ni? Bersipah kat dalam tu. Di sebesederhana, ya. Yeah? Uh, because in, in, in there you will see that, oh, they are trying to try new things, but they will still go back to what's comfortable and uh, comfortable and uh, uh, what do you, you call it? What's the word in my head? Uh, yeah, what, what familiar to them, yeah, comfortable and familiar to them. Uh, so they go for brands that are sensible, safe, practical, and yeah. Okay, they will look for prizes. So online shopping is their place. Um, and when they do go out, uh, it's more about family time. It's more about, um, yeah, let's go and play at the playground together. Um, or Giant has got, you know, a playground in their in the child corner, baby, baby and kids corner. So they love that. By the by, the way, there's food court also, and then you get shopping done. So it's it's everything that you do is around centered around their family. Average tech adoption, they don't need to get the latest, and whatever they do, decision making is usually often driven by what their children needs are. Very rational. Hey, hang on, what did I do? Very rational. I haven't finished this, and. Their, their, their appetite for experiment is still give me something I want to explore, but I want to explore within my safety net. So don't don't take them onto a roller coaster ride, yeah. The final group. The final group, yeah. Um Umah Baru. Now you would it's very easy to find them as the Muslim activists, but Umar Baru, we see, is beyond just Muslim activists. Yeah? Umar Baru is all about, I have a purpose in this world. I live in this world, I live in this world because I'm serving a greater why. I don't just exist. So for that, it could be about religion. It could be about urban farming. It could be about breastfeeding. It could be about eco. It could be about recycling, social entrepreneurship. These are the people who's here. Yeah. So what are they about? They are idealistic people. They are defined by what they, believe, they strongly believe in. And not only I believe, I must influence others. I must make sure that I spread this word, this good cause to people and they are on a lifelong journey for recruitment. Yeah. And how they define themselves is in terms of service to society. It's about what can I do for a good for the people around me. They are highly clever, highly opinionated, and they will act on it. I've I've seen this when I was doing my research. Um I saw a group of Umar Baru. They do not wait for government hand me downs. They get together and they would organize um, a project where they go to a to a kampung, to a rural area, and they feed the whole entire orang asli there, uh, repair the houses, build the surau, and convert the whole kampung to become Muslim. Yeah, so they are seriously capable and they are the kinds of people, um, I would say, who's gone out there, who's seen the world and they come back and say, I want to make a difference here in this country, in where I live. So they are exposed. They, they, they have very, very upper. Uh, they're very exposed and they, they know what they're talking about and they demand for quality uh, uh, standard, uh, yeah. Um, 
they are natural leaders and very very passionate warm and approachable genuine caring high interest in community and society these are the kind of people um i see them in Taman Tun area, um, I see them in Bangi, I see them in Kajang, I see them. They would go to the masjid, to the mosque, in their BMW or Audi and carrying an LV bag. Very subtle though, they, they don't flash like the, like the elites. So they have the purchasing power and they will demand for quality and they will go through the great extent to get the quality or buy products that resonate, that relate to what they believe. So if you have a, a chili sauce and you tell the Umar Baru that this chili sauce are made by chili, uh, planted by single mothers in some kampung in Kelantan, or they will buy probably the whole carton, yeah? Yeah, so they are that kind. So there's the Muslim activists the social activists, like I mentioned, they could be after eco, after urban farming, um, and there's the budding politician. So they are they are the need to transform and the need to create change has bring rise to this one sub segment that that we see is is clearly very apparent now. But what does this mean for us? What does this mean for us is that these people they will go for brands which are highly correlated with what they're looking for brands that have high integrity solid values and they tend to want to support local brands okay um they will make their decisions and on ideologies and beliefs and they will go like i mentioned the extra mile uh, media consumption is mainly for knowledge they will spread the word to their team and they chances are they will embrace new media yeah um to to do this uh so that is the six malay segment um in a nutshell so so let me see where zaki is because I think we're we're coming to the Q and A part almost, yeah. So this is a summary. Um, uh, I mentioned about Melayu traditional. I mentioned about sederhana, santai chillax, gigi, umar. So if I can recap, Melayu traditional, high inertia, do not want sederhana. <coughs> it's exciting but make sure i have the safety net <coughs> excuse me santai chillax i want to do it and i want to do it my way the gige is i'm not afraid to work hard i'm loyal to my own progress uma baru is all about there is a higher purpose in life the elites is all about ai muka nanti apa orang kata <coughs> excuse me just let me so how do you use this segmentation model <clears throat> how would you use this segmentation model i would i would suggest um that you identify the segment <clears throat> that fits into your brand's offering. Yeah, uh, because I will say this again, there is no such thing as mass communication. We want to be very, very focused. I don't know why universities are still teaching mass comm because they don't work. We, we are becoming more targeted. We need to make sure that every dollar of our spend is giving us the highest ROI. So we want to know who are we targeting. So look at the six segments, map it against what your brand is offering, see, maybe you would have two, three, or even four segments that could relate 
or could fit into what your brand is offering. Then what you want to do is assess whether this is the right segment by calculating the attractiveness index. Now write this down, the attractiveness index. I don't have it here, but the attractiveness index is about the segment size times the growth times the ability to address. Now, segment size, I can give you later. You have to connect with me. That's the punching, okay? Growth, I, I do not have growth data because in terms of data, it's expensive to measure this over time. But I think we can qualitatively um, make a judgment call which segment is growing the most. And I would say, based on my observation, the segment that is growing the most is the Umar Baru, the Santai Chilex, and the Gigi. Yeah, so these are the three segments you want to focus on. You want to make sure that you have products addressing them. If you are a big, huge brand, map all the product portfolio that you have under you and make sure you have them addressing every and each one because this particular product A could be about value driver and then you're targeting the elites, the goal, you know, the Nescafe goal and Nescafe Dolce Gusto. Um, um, the, what's that? Okay. So you would want to have also brands or products that's targeting the volume, the masses, yeah? So the Melayu traditional and Serba Sahana is still quite big. Oh, someone's having a doodle on my screen. I don't know who you find. Okay. And find the pain points and the, or the insights in which your brand can provide a solution to this segment, yeah? So if you're talking about just what your brand is all about, you're pushing, you're pushing, you're pushing your brand out there, chances are it will be very tiring, very heavy. But when you find the insights of your target segment, so for example, if you're after the gigi and you know the gigi is time poor, you know the gigi will go for value for money, yeah? You would want to make sure that your brand messaging is address, addressing the gap or the pain point of the gigi. And that will become your positioning or your idea when you go to market, okay? Yeah, so I think that's it. That's all I have for today, I think, Zaki. Yes, yes, yes. So um, now it's that the last slide. Um, can you go to the last slide? Next slide. Um, yes. Yeah, so so um, we have selected few questions. Yeah. Um, so uh, uh, there are. There are four groups of questions that I, that I can see from the chat. One is, is to Rome. So the first question, Rome, is what is the distribution of segments within the populations and how do they intersect? Who do they mimic the, 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 the demography of the population? Um, one second. Distribution of the segments um, right now, right now, the segment distribution is pretty much skew. I, I will tell you, okay? Back to this. Melayu traditional, sebesejahana, almost makes up almost half of the population. Almost half. Um, however, they are pretty stagnant. The growth comes from Umar Baru. Baru is taking about, seeming to be about almost a quarter. 
sharing um, the, the pie together with Santai Chilex. So that, that, that you already answered my second question, which, which is the fastest growing segment would be the Gigi, um, the Umabaru and, and the Santai, the, the, not, yeah, the, the Santai Chilex group. So that would be the, the fastest growing group, yeah? So um, the other one more practical questions. Uh, this one was just from from well, from my ex boss. Um, can you identify which retailers just that that correlate? You know, uh, which the segment group goes to. For example, wh where does the Malay traditional goes? Where does the the the, the elites goes? This elites, for example, the traditional goes to Maiden or, or you know giants, and and the elites goes to. Guy Grocer or, you know, Sam or all this. I can't remember on top of my mind right now. Uh, that information I can cross tap with uh, the uh, database that we have. Get in touch. Michael, is it? Michael To, your ex boss. Yeah. Michael, call me lah. Nanti we talk. <laughs> right. The, the next question is it's more on, on what's your. On the segment of of uh, BMF, buy Muslim first. Uh, what segment do they fall to? Uh, uh, that that I would uh, I would see this this segment behavior is brand do they brand loyal or brand does brand loyalty apply here? Uh, BMF, yeah. You're talking about BMF, right? Buy I would first, yes. I would say that BMF is mainly the Umabaru and Gigi. The Umabaru and Gigi, because, and, and mind you, I say this again, uh, uh, you're not just one segment. You tend to be, any one person who tend to be taking one, more than one, at least two, because there's a dominant and there's a recessive uh, uh, persona that's going on in our, in our, in our mind, yeah? So BMF, I think the growth of BMF is driven by the Umar Baru and the Gigi. So yeah, yes, yeah. so meaning that, that everyone of, of the Malays would, would carry a dominant and recessive, at least yes, at yes, least two yes, yes. groups of people. I may got three. So um, I have any interest that I actually have the questionnaire. So you can actually profile and see what you fall under, what you tend to be, yeah? And you will see that you will rate high on two segments, yeah. higher than the others, yeah? And so right. I'm just um, question, I, uh, uh, loyal brand, so brand loyalty will apply here. What does that mean? No, no, I think, I think this, um, I, I can, this, because, because this is, uh, uh, expert question. So I think I can, if I were to speculate, the question would be, would would brand loyalty be affected by the BMF? Because if one loyal to to a normal international brand, but but when the BMF comes, would the loyalty be be at risk? I, I would. Yeah, so when we were doing our research when we were talking to the elite uh, Umar Baru. Oh yeah, uh, definitely, definitely, there is a cry for a local brand that is premium and quality especially in skincare beauty segment because there's there's so much out there that they, they don't know or they don't see how how what what was the quality level of those brands now umar baru always always then the urban umar baru would tend to look for quality product that they are willing to pay for so if they are already using counter brands and they want to shift, they would saying that they don't have a brand, a local brand that they can go to and and is relatable to them. Yeah. That's one opportunity. Hin hin. Yeah. Okay, I am going through some of the questions here in the chat group also, since I think do we have time, Zaki? Yes, we have time. So uh, the other questions, uh, uh, Rome, is um, is is uh, this? How does the social media? Uh, this uh, social media the best platform to target all Malay 
targets um uh, you have you know. he does platform to target everybody but i think you just need to know how to go there and where do they hang out and how to speak to them your the voice of uh, what voice are you using right and um i think a lot of brands still try to translate from english to malay and then it sounds very kaku you know um now i go back to talking about the difference between a product brand selling a product and selling a brand when you're selling a brand a brand you're selling a product it's just basically you're just pushing your functional benefit of what you the product you're selling but when you're selling a brand you're building relationship with your consumers with your target audience so in building the relationship you need to know how they they are, they are speaking you need to know how they talk and then you come over you go into their into their 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 their, their house their pool whatever they hang out and then you start speaking in a way that doesn't connect or relate to them because it's translated from a english version copy um that's the main main challenge so so if, if i may add on the on the social media on 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 the malays i i seen a data during uh, my time we did a, a a quarterly brand health so one of the thing that that uh, different between malay consumer and chinese consumer is that the malay would engage on the right communications they would engage whereas chinese would share they would not engage they would not comment much but they would share they would they would spread it out they would viral it but they would not comment much on it in an open group they would comment it in a closed group whereas the malay with the right communication with the right lingo they would more than happy to share stories to 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 engage with you in 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 social media that's the data that i have yeah thank you for sharing zaki um one of the question she shang my ex colleague i think she shang right that's you um is it possible to have a unified marketing strategy which can appeal to all now um yes and no i i, I mean marketing is always something you decide what you want to do lah kan if you want to have one blanket covers all uh, effectiveness may not be there i will tell you a story of how we use insights in 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 targeting uh, i was in i was in unilever and we were about we were launching the dove shampoo one brand and then we had two marketing campaign one addressing the chinese and one addressing the malay i kid you not with the chinese the messaging was about um use dove shampoo benefit wise my hair is shining i get i get more confident i've got i got this self confidence i can do my presentation well and i can get notice for promotion by my boss very very functional rational thinking right with the malay segment the story or the messaging was use daf shampoo and daf body wash because your skin will be so soft because of the one quarter moisturizing cream and then the husband your husband cannot stop touching you okay so you see same brand you speak different way so it's all about targeting and focusing your messaging to your consumer to know what drives them what makes them tick yeah okay so i think we are 5:28 we are 2 minutes away um i'm just going to look at what i'm going to take one more questions one more question no s room okay one question what's the nice question to answer distribution i have answered segmentation in the group for the region i think the demographic data we will have to we we will have to look into your specific category your specific um brand and then look at where and how the distribution is yeah so with that i'm going to end with this next slide um what do we do next next 
we can deep dive into each of the segment. That means we can look at every segment, the gigeh, the umar baru, the santa chilex, yeah, and look at the segment size, look at the demographics, north, south, east, west, age, household income, race, gender. We can look at that. We can look at the UNA and the media behavior. We we have those information available, but we would require it, it's best that you get in touch with us to get those information, right? And we could also do a deep dive into the category. So say, for example, you're selling um, um, indulgence product. Let's look at indulgence and let's look at which category or which segment do you want to target with your indulgence product? So now, again, I would say here, not necessarily you are about indulgence, you have to go and target elitis, eh? because in this day and age, especially with the pandemic, with MCO, with the economic hardship, even the B40 needs to feel good, needs to pick themselves up. If your brand is about small indulgence that you can take every day without feeling guilty, we can look at how we can deep dive into that particular category and we can create a customized workshop for your brand. So this is what we have on the table offer for you. Do reach out to us and um, the email that you want to get at is the 6ms at idescape.com.my. Zaki? Yeah, so... Um reach out to us and, and we'll give you a copy of the summary, not the whole deck. Unfortunately, we can't give you the whole deck. Um, so I just type the, the, the email there. Then Martin just, just shared the the, uh, the link. So you can download the, the, the summary of, of um, can you, can, if people can see me. So, so a summary, a one pager of, of, of the of the what Roma has been has been uh, brilliantly talked just now. So um, you need more detail. You need further of it. Um, get back get back to us. More than happy to to have a chat with you. And then um, then if there is um, nothing else, so so you can see the 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 thing. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna say so. It's https at skit .com my or slash six ms dot download so, so do that and then and um yeah so but if you know rom personally uh contact her if anyone knows me contact me and and then uh we'll we'll um we'll get around so so rom anything else from your side how do i go zaki for listening in. Thank you. It's been a pleasure having all of you. And it's so good to see some familiar names. I um, Drop me a note. I would love to reconnect with all of you. Thank you so much for spending time with so us today. With that, thank you very much. Um, then we'll close the, the session. Uh, thank you much. Good afternoon. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you.